so asking for, period. Like, no qualification to that statement. He said, I've been all in to keep this team here, but we've reached a point where they either need to play ball at a level that works for us, or else they've got to look elsewhere. And I, that's what Kevin Johnson has said. Right now, the owners in the league are backing the Maloots and trying to leverage the situation so they can stay in Sacramento, but this has kind of reached that crossroads, and it'll be curious to see where it goes from here. When you look at this Sacramento roster, you see a lot of firepower. Marcus Thornton, DeMarcus Cousins, Tyreek Evans, uh, they draft uh, Jimmer Fredette. They got some guys like John Salmons and so forth, Travis Outlaw, that are probably, uh, you know, have, have seen their better days and, and, and maybe making a lot more money than they should. But you look at this roster and you see a lot of firepower. But I guess you go back to the old thing that there's only one basketball, right, man? Well, and I think that, again, it, it comes back to will guys on this roster be selfless enough and play team basketball, which begins with defense, Craig. And, and I don't know that they have the personality types in the mix that are going to acquiesce that way. Isaiah Thomas has been a revelation. I mean, a guy was, that was the, the last pick in the draft as a second-round selection is playing with a chip on his shoulder, has carried that in a positive way, has some natural leadership instincts that are moving this team in the right direction right now, but they've got to get personnel that are willing to defend before they become any sort of a serious threat uh, to be one of the top eight teams in the Western Conference. Let's look around the league right now as we go down the stretch. Obviously a big game in Chicago last night, but a game that the Miami Heat had a chance to put away with LeBron James at the line last night. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the reigning MVP, Derrick Rose, just missed another shot. I mean, are you That's kidding the me? Team. It's, 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 you know, yeah, the Bulls are at home, but how did the Heat not find a way to close that game out? And, and you've got the old ugly theories that are going to resurface they're going to have to deal with based on their own doing. So uh, I still am not a believer in what their personnel mix is, regardless who's coaching them. And I think that they, whether they get to the NBA Finals or not, will not win the whole thing with that mix of guys this season. For a couple of months, people have said it's Miami and Chicago in the east, it's Oklahoma City and San Antonio in the west. If we see one team break through, besides those four, either in the east or the west, who do you like? Well, the obvious uh, right now designees that way, to me, would be Indiana in the east, because I, I like how they're stocked top to bottom. They're very balanced. They can play inside, outside. Uh, they do a decent job defensively. I don't like their point guard situation, but I think they're motivated, uh, Craig, and I think they could potentially, they'll put themselves in position to be in the series in the second round against Boston or Miami. I, I really believe, or I should say Chicago or Miami. And in the Western Conference, I, the jury's still out. Uh, I think the Lakers, if they get quality play from Andrew Bynum like they did in San Antonio, become a legitimate threat to win the whole thing. That probably where I, be where I would gravitate but Memphis still has uh, the remnants of a season ago and the, the magic they pulled out in postseason. And I think a lot of those guys are believing right now. So it's a dangerous trek for whomever it is that believes it's going to win the Western Conference. Really, really tough spreading, I think, once the playoffs start. So in the East, you give Indiana a better shot than the Celtics? I do. I, I do because in round two, Boston's going to have to deal with a back-to-back -back, uh, scenario. The league and its new collective bargaining agreement mandated that there be a back-to-back -back that every team plays in round two and i really think that throws them for a loop against the chicago or miami and determines the outcome of that series and it's too bad their age i think is going to get the better of them at the end of the day it's fun to see them play at the level they're playing right now but i think it's full of gold you were ranking power forwards on wednesday night and you said you still had tim duncan in your top three and then he went out last night and had 28 points and 12 rebounds including 20 in the second half and i credit as much greg popovich and the coaching staff craig in san antonio for uh really uh propping him back up uh, giving him the, the, the necessary rest recognizing nights when they didn't need him to go full force for 35 to 40 minutes. And I think that they've adapted some of what they're doing offensively. He's not the focal point of everything that's going on offensively. So I, I think that there's less burden on his shoulders, and he's really responded. It, it, it's magnificent to watch for anybody that loves the game and, and loves players that have brought what Duncan has brought and has been the ambassador for this game that he's been over the years. And I think that if the Spurs are healthy, you can't look away from them as being, uh, again, an enormous threat to win the whole thing this season. Matt, we appreciate it. As always, folks, do not go anywhere because when we come back, Kelly Crow talks to Big.